Need for Speed Carbon was released back in 2006 and is for many people considered as the top 5 Need for Speed games ever released. It was developed by Black Box Studio, same as Need for Speed Mods Wanted 2005, and in many aspects the games are quite similar to each other, and so is the amount of mods available for both games, from graphics mods to car mods and to other useless mods. I'm driving around Palmon City and I'm wondering when it will start to dawn. And then I remember that Carbon was said to be played at night time only. Well, not anymore. Modders gave us the ability to experience the game at daytime as well, with this daytime mod. From now on, you won't have to be stuck in the dark anymore. The daytime mod I used is from a game test mod, and it's unfortunately a payable mod, but there is also a free version of the daytime mod, which I will also link down in the description. And when you combine this mod with the 8K HDR Skyboxes mod, it makes clouds us in real life, together with ray tracing shaders, you really get a totally different experience. Oh, and I also must not forget the physics frame rate changer mod, that simply changes the refresh rate of the physics, which makes everything in a game smoother. Need for Speed Carbon Drift events were one of the most fun things you could do in the game. And now, with this Drift Physics mod, we can now use the same Drift Physics from Drift events in Free Realm as well. And the cool thing is, you can enable or disable Drift Physics with just a click of a button. The Z-Menu mod is an in-game trainer, similar to trainers in GTA V. And with installing this trainer, you are basically getting more than 300 mods for your Need for Speed Carbon. From Helicopter Spawn mod, it has a proper GTA-like physics, to Free Camera mod, Shockwave mod, Chaos mod, Fucked Up World mod, and my absolute favorite, Half-Life mod where you can float through the air, jump and shoot rockets at whoever you want. It's really so much to explore and to do with the z menu mod. Need for Speed never really focused on the bike community. So with this Kawasaki mod, now you can ride a bike in Need for Speed Carbon as well. And when you turn into a corner, it actually leans kind of like a real bike. Or if you're not a fan of Kawasaki, maybe you will like 2008 Suzuki Hayabusa. I probably pronounced that wrong. Don't worry, there are also mods for car guys like me. For example, Bugatti Chiron mod. Because, I mean, if you don't have a Bugatti... Well, what color is your Bugatti? Need for Speed 2015 custom HUD mod is pretty self-explanatory. It replaces standard carbon HUD with the one from the Need for Speed 2015. Or, if you are maybe a fan of a more futuristic look, you can try out this next-gen HUD mod, which looks like next-gen. If you ever wondered how Palmon City would look like covered in snow, now you can see that with this Winter Hearted mod that adds snow, and it honestly looks pretty cool, and it really gives me that winter vibe. Moving on to some other graphics mods, and you can probably guess at least one, and that's Redux mod. As with all other Redux mods, this one is also free, and is a really nice mod to have. The only downside of the mod is that you'll have to start a new career, because your previous game save files won't be working with the Redux mod. Next graphics mod actually consists of three mods put together, and that's 4K Textures mod, which makes the textures look a little bit better, Ray Tracing graphics mod which is a payable mod but in my opinion looks awesome, and the Ray Tracing shaders, which gives that final touch to the look of the game. But at the end, I'm still more of a fan of how Redux mod looks. Need for Speed Carbon Remaster Do the Repack mod is a mod with which you will get the most out of it. First of all, the mod comes with two texture options. Carbon Remaster Textures or Apex Textures. In my opinion, the Carbon Remaster Textures look immaculate. And that's not all. With the Do the Repack mod, you also get so many new cars added to the game that is just ridiculous. From Koenigsegg Regera, Dodge Hellcat, Lamborghini Huracan Performante, BMW M2, to so many more. And the final graphics mod we have is my absolute favorite out of all, and that's City Lights mod. I just feel like this mod flows with the game best. Unfortunately, this one is also payable mod, but it's from the same guy that made Daytime mod. So if you buy his Patreon subscription, you will get both. Motion Blur Control mod is a simple mod that can make your game look much better. If you're fed up with the original motion blur the game has, which is just ridiculously bad, then this mod is for you. It allows you to control various settings of motion blur in game, and from now on you'll have a smooth motion blur throughout the whole game. Nitro's Color Pack is a pretty self-explanatory as well. 
it visually adjusts the nitrous color and nitrous shape depending on the option you pick. You can choose from 4 different shapes and 21 color options each. Cars in Infraspeed Carbon could have more exhaust pops and a little louder backfire. And you can achieve that with the backfire mod, which does exactly that. Returning to some more car mods, we have a Liberty Walk Nissan GTR mod, which handles pretty good. But if you would like to forget about your brakes and have your foot on the throttle all the time, then this Mercedes AMG F1 car mod is perfect for you. Or if you're not a fan of Mercedes and you prefer Ferrari, don't worry, there is also a Ferrari F2004 mod which will basically handle the same. If you are one of those who think police pursuits in Infraspeed Carbon are easy, well, you're insane. But thankfully to you, there is a revamped pursuit mod that aims to make the pursuits in game more challenging. Cops will use diverse vehicles as you progress through heat levels, roadblocks will be placed more frequently, and some units are now heavier and therefore harder to destroy. You can also add new police cars with the Muscle Cop car mod which adds a state fourth Mustang with a Need for Speed undercover livery on a hit level 3 and an undercover one on a hit level 4, alongside the standard Pontiac GTO. But be careful, since the mod is not that stable, and when you crash into one of the cops, your game might crash. Or if you are one of those that absolutely hates cops, then this no cops mod is for you. You will still hear police radio chatter when they send the units, but police will never spawn. Need for Speed Heat style barriers is another mod that makes your game more up to date and simply replaces original race barriers with the ones from Need for Speed Heat. Moving on to some extremely useful mods, the first one is the Baby mod. You can't really customize this mod since the Baby is already perfect, but the only downside of the mod is that the Baby costs 900 million. What the fuck? But don't worry, we can help ourselves with the Carbon Unlocker mod that is primarily used to fix our save game files, but we can also use it to give ourselves some money, so we can buy the baby. Another useful mod is Uganda Knuckles mod. And what we just witnessed here ladies and gentlemen, this is an insanity mod, and as the name says, it will make the gameplay quite insane. Opponents and cops will rubber band even more, tweak physics which will make you and your opponent to crash quite easily, and traffic cars can crash onto you and also cops are stronger. Expensive cars in traffic mod adds exotic cars to be driven by NPCs, such as McLaren SLR, Pagani Zonda, Lamborghini Murcielago, Dodge Viper and others. Another mod that was brought from Need for Speed Heat is Need for Speed Heat style garage. This next mod is called Semi with Trailers and it adds a new truck and two new trailers for the semi truck. Another mod that was also seen for Need for Speed Most Wanted is an Orbit Camera mod. Let's you move the camera around your car, and it's honestly surprising that this wasn't included with the vanilla game. The Fast and Furious Car Pack mod actually consists of 10 car mods that were seen in Fast and Furious movies. Mitsubishi Eclipse from Fast and Furious 1, Brian's Nissan Skyline, Brian's Mitsubishi Iwa, Brian's Toyota Supra, RX-7 from Too Fast Too Furious, Brian's Subaru Impreza, Dom's Honda Civic, oh and yeah, some of the cars have fucked up wheel placement, Suki's Honda S2K, Dom's Mazda RX-7, and DK's Nissan 350Z. And one awesome thing that comes with the mod is that each car has a driver from the movie, for example, Brian O'Connor in Toyota Supra, or DK in Veilside 350Z. Another car mod I have to mention is my absolute dream car, Lamborghini Murcielago SV. And one more pretty cool mod is Autosculpt Dream Spec. In Need for Speed Carbon you could autosculpt few rims as you desired. Now with this mod you can autosculpt all of them. Probably one of the first mods for Need for Speed Carbon was the OG Need for Speed Carbon Trainer, which had a few pretty useful options, for example, unlimited money, infinite nitrous, can get busted and many more. And last but certainly not the least mod we have, Steam Police Undercover mod. It similarly to one of the previous police mods, replaces some police vehicles. Ferrari La Ferrari replaces Federal Undercover Vehicle, Nissan GTR replaces State Undercover Vehicle, and BMW 3.0 CSL Homage R replaces Civic Undercover Cruiser. 
With this, we can prove that 50 miles of the line stalled for intraspeed carbon. Or, if I'm totally honest, that was 49 mods. But 50 sounds better. So yeah, you was clickbaited. But I still hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash that like button and comment down below your favorite mod if there is any mod you think I might missed out and I need to try out. Also, don't forget to subscribe so I won't miss on future videos. And as always, have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.